The Gospel of May the 26, 2017 A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, Amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will weep, but your grief will become joy. When a woman is in labor, she is in anguish because her hour has arrived. But when he when she has given birth to a child, she no longer remembers the pain because of her joy, that a child has been born into the world. So you also are now in anguish, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy away from you. On that day you will not question me about anything. Amen, amen, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the title for the homily today is The Joy to See the Risen One. We still are meditating on this part of the Gospel. Just we advanced a little bit and we retain this part. You will weep and mourn. And as I explained yesterday, it relates to the time when the Lord's preparing his disciples, his apostles, because they will be shocked by his death on the cross. At that time you will weep and mourn, while the world rejoices, really. Satan and all his agents, happy to see the Son of God finally death on the cross, thinking that they were able to win over the Lord, not knowing the faithfulness of the love of the Father. And that is what the Lord says, your, your, your grief will become joy. Why? Because we will see the justice, we just saw the justice of the love of the Father. That notwithstanding that we killed the Lord and that seemingly he was frustrated. On the contrary, his own sacrifice in all freedom in all humbleness, in all love, actually destroy death by his death and reconciled us sinners with the Father through his body, through his wounds, through his blood, as long as we accept him, Yeshua, Jesus, Savior. The Lord goes on to say, when a woman is in labor, she is in anguish. And of course, the pain that the woman suffers while giving birth is great, especially if the, um, especially if she gives birth in the natural way. Of course, nowadays we have all sorts of drugs, all sorts of uh, means of helping her not to feel any most of the pain. But in a normal way, women would suffer, would sustain a lot of pain. But just as the Lord says here, when she has given birth, she no longer remembers the pain. Why? Because there was something greater than just the pain for her to gain. There is a child, a, a boy or a girl, that she is able to hug. And from that on starts the journey of motherhood. Sometimes joyful, sometimes griefful, sometimes tearful, but joy nonetheless all the time. The Lord says, you are also in anguish, just like the woman, because you will see what happens. He had already told them that he was going to be crucified and they were quite afraid of that but the lord says i will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one can, will take will take your joy away from you and it's true again like i was telling yesterday we can only imagine the greatest joy because you see our minds our hearts have this tendency. If we do not allow us to suffer, it is difficult for us 
to enjoy ourselves. It is a lie when we try to convince ourselves that I'm just going to take the good moments, but I'm not going to take the bad ones. Because every year has one summertime and one wintertime, has one autumn time when the leaves fall, and one springtime. The autumn, in autumn, the leaves fall from the trees, and the trees go to sleep. And some of them might even be dead, the little plants, but seeds remain alive, seemingly dead. But every springtime we have life again, anew. And that is life. If we numb ourselves and we do not like to feel the pain, neither will be able to feel the joy. So it was just right after they felt this numbness of pain, right after, three days after, when they were given the greatest of all gifts, life eternal, the love of the Father, justice served. And then all of a sudden they are overjoyed. And the Lord says, no one can take away your joy because it's yours, because you're in the hand of, of God. You're in the hand of the Father and no one can take anything away from his hand. The gospel today ends with these beautiful words. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. And again, we see it time and again and time and again. We see how Noah intercedes by his own deeds for mankind, by believing God and doing his will. We see how Abraham intercedes for Godoma and Gomorrah, even though those places were not good places, but he wanted to save whatever righteous man or woman would be there. We see how Moses would intercede before the Lord. In one passage of the Old Testament, it even says that he, him, that he put himself in the way before the wrath of God in order to stop him. And of course we see he who is our icon, our goal, the Lord Jesus, that offers himself to the Father for our sake. What should we be asking the Father in the name of God, in the name of Jesus Christ? We need to be asking salvation. Do not ask for material things, worthless things. That's just futile. It they might be necessary from time to time. But that is not the greatest thing to ask for. Ask for conversion. Ask for life eternal. Ask for holiness. Dear brothers, let us pray for each other this way, in a grand way. Let us ask what really counts the whole world. The whole material world is not worth one soul. Wouldn't it be great if God would grant you and me many souls to be saved because we interceded, because we said, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I beg you for the salvation of such and such. Wouldn't it be great? Yes, it would. And it is possible because the Lord says so. Amen, amen. In truth, in truth. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, He will give you. Do pray for everyone and put me in your prayers as I will pray for you. Until we meet in heaven, God bless you all, brothers.